Okay, this is a video on creating a Wireshark dissector. Um, Wireshark is a protocol analyzer and a dissector allows you to analyze your own protocols. I'm going to introduce to you a high-level message description language called TSN.1, which is going to help accelerate this uh, process of writing the Wireshark dissector. Basically, what we'll do is use the TSN.1 message description language to define our protocol and a lot of the code generation for the Wireshark dissector will be done for us. We're going to start out the Protomatics website. Uh, if you follow the link that says Wireshark Dissectors, uh, it'll lead you to the page that is essentially the web format of this tutorial. Uh, on the page, uh, there'll be a lot of useful downloads and links, so uh, we're definitely going to be using this page as a reference. From the tutorial page, the first link you're going to want to follow is to wireshark.org. Uh, and from there, uh, go to the download page to download the source code. You may be able to skip this step if you already have Wireshark on your computer. Uh, but keep in mind, you're going to need a working build of Wireshark. Once the source code is downloaded, move it to the directory where you want to install Wireshark. Um, there, we will untar the file. And for the commands on how to do that, uh, again, please reference the tutorial webpage where we first started. You may be run into some problems when you configure uh, because of some missing packages, but um, typically if you Google the error message, you'll be able to find the missing packages and download them and try the install process again. And don't be misled by this video. Uh, the process takes about 10 to 20 minutes. Okay, now that we have a working build of Wireshark, uh, we're ready for step two of the tutorial, which is creating the actual dissector. The easiest way to do that is to download the example protocol that we've created uh, called Echo Dissector that can be found in step two of the tutorial webpage. It's important that you move this file to uh, the Wireshark directory and then follow the untar command from the website. Once that's done, you'll have all the files you need for uh, Wireshark Dissector in the plugin slash echo directory. Most of the files you're not going to need to touch, but one of the important files is packet-echo.c. Please follow along on the tutorial website as we go over the functions in this file. First, we declare what type of packets we want to dissect and on what port. In this case, it's UDP packets on port 3001. Next, we have the proto register echo function. This registers the message types with Wireshark. The real work is done by the echo packet register function, which is one of the functions that is generated by the TSN.1 compiler. We'll get to the TSN1 compiler a little bit later. Lastly, we have the dissect echo function, which is the function that actually dissects the packets. Echo packet dissect is the function generated by the TSN1 compiler. This function is called every time a packet is received on UDP port 3001. So the way the TSN1 compiler works is it takes a .tsn file which defines all the messages in your protocol and uh, the TSN1 compiler takes that TSN file and generates the .h header file and the .c source file which contains the necessary functions to uh, dissect your uh, raw data. So next we'll take a look at the TSN file that defines our echo protocol and then I'll show you how to take that TSN file to auto-generate the files and functions for our dissector. Echo.tsn can be found in the plugins slash echo directory. If we take a look at the file we see that there are two types of messages in our protocol echo request and echo response. The message types are enumerated. Type 0 is an echo request and type 1 is an echo response. Each echo packet has some common header fields. Uh, first is an 8-bit type field, followed by a 32-bit source address and a 32-bit destination address. As you can see, here is where we specify that the type is enumerated. Also, we specify um, how we want to display the addresses. So when Wireshark displays the addresses, instead of showing the integer value which it receives, 
it will display it as an IPv4 address. After the header fields comes the payload. Um, and here in this example, we use the case of construct. This means that if the type is equal to the enumerated constant echo request value zero, then the payload contains an echo request. If the type is echo response value one, then the payload contains an echo response. In both cases of echo response or echo request messages, there will be an 8-bit sequence number in the payload. This is just a preview of what this high-level message description language can do. For the full TSN1 specification, please follow the link on step 3 of the tutorial on the webpage. You will find that virtually any protocol can be defined using this message description language. Now we have our echo.tsn file that defines all the protocol messages. We need to download the tsn.1 compiler so that uh, we can generate the necessary uh, .h and .c files. Follow the download link and uh, it will bring you to the download page along with the uh, installation guide. Follow the installation guide to complete the installation process. Please be patient as it may take some time to get the um, license registration key. The last part to step three of the tutorial is to run the command that um, tells the compiler to uh, generate the functions from the echo.tsn file. This needs to be done in the plugins slash echo directory where the echo.tsn file is found. The command to do this can be found at the bottom of uh, step three of the tutorial. Uh, once it's complete, you will see that there are some new files in the plugin slash echo directory, um, namely echo.c and echo.h. Now that the dissector is complete, we just need to rebuild Wireshark with the dissector plugin. The commands to do this can be found in step four of the tutorial. Be sure that you've gone back to the Wireshark directory before executing the commands. Once you've done that, simply type dot slash Wireshark and it'll launch the Wireshark program. To show how the dissector works, we have a pre-captured data file in the plugin slash echo directory. To open the pre-captured data file, go to the file menu and select open. Locate and select the echo underscore data file. Once you open the data file, you will see that there are two messages. In the main panel, you will see the dissected contents of the messages, and at the bottom you'll see the raw data. When we open the echo protocol portion of the message, we see the echo packet. First is the type field, which has a value of zero. That's why we know it's an echo request. Next we have the source address and destination address. As you can see, the addresses are displayed correctly in the IPv4 format, which we specified in the TSN message definition file. And finally, we have the payload, um, which we know is an echo request because of the type indicated earlier. When we open message 2, we see basically the same thing, except this time it's an echo response message. And there you have it. Uh, you've created your first Wireshark dissector. Uh, I hope this tutorial has been helpful.